All right, uh, so welcome to BA demo. Welcome to BA demo. So before I proceed, let me introduce you myself. Uh, my name is uh, Kunal and I've been working in IT for almost uh, 16 years now. And most of the time I've been working as a business analyst and as a project manager. To talk about my training experience, I have close to seven years of experience as a business analyst trainer and as a project management trainer. To talk about project management, I teach CAPM and uh, PMP certification. Okay. And uh, to talk about my education people, I'm an MBA graduate from San Jose State University, California. I do also hold a PMP certification since July 2006. It has been more than seven years. I've been working as certified PMP based project manager. Okay. And also people right now, I'm based in San Diego. I work for a company called as Qualcomm. It's a telecom company that I work for and I work in the capacity of a project manager. That's my introduction, people. That's my introduction. Okay. All right, uh, people. So here I'm here to give you some basic information about our business analysis course. Uh, so as part of this, we'll see who the BA is. We'll try to understand roles and responsibility of a BA. We'll try to understand the cu course curriculum, of course, at a high level. We'll try to understand career path of a BA. We'll do a job comparison between BA job and other jobs in IT. We'll understand the schedule of the training and some additional points. And at last, I would like to conduct a question and answer session. So this is uh, pretty much what will be covered in today's uh, demo session. So let's start with the question, who is a business analyst? Who is this guy? So people, if you see the definition, it says business analyst is one who acts as a liaison or a mediator or bridge between business team and technical team. Okay, basically he acts as a mediator between business team and technical team. Okay, fine. So let me elaborate on the same. So what actually it means is, now let's say people, if this is an IT department. <clears throat> now let's say if this is an uh, IT department. Okay, so when I say IT department people, we have two different group of people. One group of people um, are called as uh, the business team. Okay, and the other group of people are called as the uh, technical team. Okay, and in this situation people, you have a business analyst. Okay, you have a business analyst who acts as a mediator. That is on one side you have a business team and on the other side you have a technical team. One side you have a business team and on the side you have a technical team. Okay, so basically he acts as a mediator between business team and technical team. Okay, again being a mediator, what exactly he does, we'll see that in a few minutes from now. Okay, right. Also people, let me give you an idea about how this training would be conducted. That is method of the training. So in this training, what happens people, let's say if I have to teach you a topic. So what happens is, first I shall uh, go through the uh, theoretical part of the topic. Then I shall uh, go through the uh, practical part of the topic. Okay, so when I say practical part of the topic, what happens is I shall cover real time example from my side. Okay, also people I will make you work on a real time example from my from your side. So talking about important topics, people what I'll do is I'll make you work on uh, two projects uh, from your side and I'll make you uh, work on uh, five projects uh, from your side. Uh, so I think I was wrong. So two projects from my side people that is I'll give you two project demonstration from my side. And five per project, I'll be giving you as an assignment to work on. Mostly, people every Fridays will be will be having a presentation, okay? And people, um, again, when I say topic, for every topic, we'll be telling you stories. It would be a story based learning. I believe in this, people. Stories are really a very nice way to make you understand a subject. Stories will help you to rem rem to remember the subject for a really long time, okay? So this is the method of the training, okay? So now people, let's understand roles and responsibility of a BA. This happens to be the most important part of uh, this demo session. So people, like I told you, for every topic, I have a story. Again, for this, I have a very nice story to tell you. But before going on to the story side of it, let me walk you through the definition. So it says, business analyst is responsible to gather requirements, detailed requirements, document requirements, and validate requirements in a format that is useful to business team and technical team. That is useful to business team and technical team. Okay. Now, people, let me tell you a story here, which will actually help you to understand roles and responsibility of a BA. Okay. So people, just for fun, let's talk something outside IT. Let's talk about a restaurant, like a food restaurant. Like a food restaurant. Now, people, let me play a role here. Let me play the role of a customer. So being a customer, when I go to a restaurant, what happens? Quite obvious that a waiter would approach me. Okay. And a waiter would like to know what I require. 
that is a waiter would ask me saying what you require that is a waiter wants to know what i want to have for lunch what i want to have a meal what i want to have for dinner now let's say people this is me okay this is me okay so let's say people i have ordered for uh, two uh, pizza let's say i ordered for one sandwich let's say I requested extra cheese on the pizza let's say I requested extra pepper in the sandwich now tell me people what is this in the box what is this in the box maybe people we can call this as requirement okay maybe we can call this as order okay maybe we can call this as uh, the needs what is a waiter trying to do here what is a waiter trying to do here so can i say that the waiter is trying to um, gather my requirements yeah quite obvious isn't it okay the waiter is trying to gather my requirements quite obvious people I have a question for you I, I want you to think on that so that is so tell me so when i being a customer when i was orally explaining my requirements when i was orally telling my requirements what do you think what a waiter does people you might have observed he carries a small little notepad and that small little notepad will have three columns so what he does is in the first column he would enter the food menu that is in this case pizza that is in this case sandwich in the second column he would enter the quantity that is two and one in the third column he would enter the comments that is in this case extra cheese and extra pepper okay so what is this what exactly is the waiter trying to do here so basically people the waiter is trying to organize my requirements isn't it organized because if you see here he has put all the food menu in one column Let's put the quantity in another column. Let's put the comments in the third column. So that is the waiter is trying to organize my requirements. And why the waiter has to organize? So basically, people he organizes so that it is easy for the chef to understand. For the chef to understand. Okay, so that's the whole reason why the waiter would organize. Okay. So in the meantime, people also uh, we can instead of using the word organize, we can replace it. With the word detail that is detail and organize they mean the same people so in that case we can say that the waiter has uh, detailed my requirements also people we can say that the waiter has documented my requirement because this is a documentation in a way okay also people can you think what he does after he does all three all these three things that is once he gathers once he details once he documents what does he do next People, have you ever observed a waiter would repeat the order? That is, he wants to cross check. He wants to cross confirm the requirement what he has taken is correct or not. And that we call that as validation. We call that as validate. Validation of uh, requirement. Okay. And people, uh, so after validates, what he does, he would hand out this requirement to the chef. And we expect the chef uh, to prepare the food based on the requirement given by the waiter. And later on, this food will be served to the customer. That's me in this case. So this is typically what a waiter would do. Okay, now the surprise is the BA also does the same thing. The difference is the BA would gather software requirements from the customer. I would like to throw some light here, people. Now let's say we have a person, um, his name is Sam. Let's say he has opened a new travel agency. Now he wants to make a website for his company. So what will he do? Obviously, he would approach some IT company. So he would approach some IT company. And now let's say people this is me i work as a ba for this it company so what happens sam would approach this it company and he will be directed to me i being a ba what i'm supposed to do i'm supposed to gather software requirements how i would talk to him i would interact with him i would like to understand what exactly he wants basically i would like to know from him what color website he wants what are the different buttons he wants on the website okay what are the different tabs he wants on the website and what should be the color of the tab what should be the color of the button okay does he want to take uh, payments online from his customer okay does he want the login feature okay does he want a logo see these are the different things what i would like to know from the client or the customer so once i get that information we have seen previously that the waiter would use would use this template to organize the same way people even a business analyst would be having such a template so using that template he would organize the software requirements i'll show you that template people uh, when the real class starts also people being a ba he would document the software requirements also being a ba he would validate the software requirements once validation happens he would hand over the requirement to the developer 
So you might have heard about developer, isn't it? So what a developer would do, the developer would prepare the software based on the requirements given by the BA. People, the logic is the chef prepares the food based on the requirements given by the waiter. So the same way the developer prepares the software based on the requirements given by the BA. So people, what will happen in the real classes? I will make you understand different uh, methods to gather software requirements and different types of requirements. We will be working on a project. Okay, also the different ways to detail. I'll make you understand different documentation. I'll make you work on that. Different ways to validate. I'll make you on, work on that. So this is uh, a core part of syllabus, people. Of course, then you'll be learning more than this, but this would be the core part of the syllabus. Okay. Well, people, this uh, should make you understand what exactly the BA would do. Of course, at a high level. People, I would like to take a second to make you understand the course curriculum. So, well, these are the different modules that will be covered. So, in this, people, a business analysis happens to be the main module. Okay, along with that, people we will be teaching you project management, which is PMP based. If you don't know what is PMP, PMP is a project management certification. It has really great value in the job market. So, the project management that will be taught, it will be based on PMP. Software testing basics will be covered, healthcare domain will be covered, finance domain will be co covered. SQL will be covered so that these are the different modules that will be covered so I do get questions saying you know what I want to get a job as a business analyst okay I want to get a job as a business analyst okay in that case don't you think so if I just go through business analysis module that's enough okay yes people that's enough but the company is trying to teach you this additional modules just because to make you competitive we want to make sure that you have edge over students coming from other training institute that's the whole point why they're trying to teach you this additional uh, five modules this will give you a really very good edge once you start attending for job interviews people okay right so now people uh, let me give you an idea about the job uh, career path okay i know most of you might be having questions saying if i start uh, as a ba now where will i find myself in the next five years where will i see myself in the next 10 years let me give you an idea people so like i told you a few a few seconds back that that is business analysis will be covered just a second Okay, that is um, BA will be covered, project management will be covered, software testing, healthcare domain, finance, and SQL will be covered. So with this combination of syllabus, obviously people you are eligible for BA job. Not only this, you can also apply for BA project manager job. So that is, there are so many jobs outside, which is very highly paid, which says we need a BA with project management skills. We need a BA who can assist a project manager. And also people you can apply for BA QA job. So these are the different uh, kinds of job that you can apply with the syllabus what we're teaching so you can understand that you uh, you'll be eligible for many different jobs many different jobs not just be many different jobs okay so whatever the first level is the next level is project manager after that you you'll be working as a program manager after that a portfolio manager after that management people what do you observe here if you watch throughout it is all about manager and it is all about management you see did you observe that people this is purely a non-technical subject this is a non-technical profession this is non-technical profession people so it has no coding it has no development it has no technical stuff this is more like a manager it is more like a management job okay people uh, so you need, need not have a computer degree for this absolutely not for example if you see me i don't have computer computer degree okay i know one of participant uh, has a computer degree Okay, but still computer degree is not required my friend. Okay, fine. All right, so next people, um, let me show you the job comparison between different jobs in IT. Okay, so people, this screenshot has been taken from Career Builder. Even you can do this. It's very simple. Okay, so people, let's say if you go to careerbuilder.com, so normally you get, uh, so just enter whatever job you want in this field. For example, here I've uh, taken .NET developer. So when I search, so these are the number of jobs what I found. Even you can do this. Once I'm done, once I'm done with the demo, you, even you can do this. So for .NET developer, we have 1,483. Okay, fine. Let's see for the other one. For Java developer. So when, once I search for Java developer, okay. So these are the number of jobs what I found. That is 1,913. Okay, fine. Fine. Next, when I search for SAP, okay. When I search for SAP, okay. So these are the number of jobs what I found. 89. Okay, fine. So again, when I search for BA, people, do you see the difference? It says 9,953. Now it is more actually. Now it is more. I want you to check people. Once I'm done with the demo, immediately I want you to check. So question comes, people, how come you have so many jobs in BA? What is the logic here? So let me make you understand. 
So people, you know, right? Let's say if we, if we have to make a website, you can build a website using Java technology. You can build a website using .NET technology. Also, people can build a website using some other technology. So let's say people, if the website is being built using, using Java technology, let's say, who all you need, you need a project manager, you need a BA, you need a Java architect, you need a Java developer. Okay. So let's say people .NET. So let's say the .NET technology being used. So in that case, you need a project manager, you need a BA, you need a .NET architect, you need a .NET developer. So some X technology. So you know, right? We keep getting new technologies once in a while. So some X technology in the future. Okay. So in that X technology, also people, you need a project manager, you need a BA, you need an X architect, you need an X developer. So what do you understand from this? Doesn't matter what the project is. Doesn't matter what the technology is. For sure, you need a BA. You need a BA. Not only him, people. You also need a project manager. See, that is how you know collectively the BA job, uh, the number of BA jobs are more compared to other jobs. Okay. So people, um, next let's understand the batch schedule. People will be having three batches a day: 10 a.m. in the morning, 8 p.m. in the evening, 10:30 in the night. And people, it is based on EST, EST timings. Okay. So people, only the days are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 10 a.m. batch. 8 p.m. also is the same. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 10:30 is also the same. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. People, the fun part about this is all the three batches will run in parallel. What do you mean by that? Let's say people Tuesday, I teach your topic called as cost management as part of 10 a.m. batch in the morning. It means the same topic will be covered again at 8 p.m. It means the same topic will be again covered third time in a day at 10.30 p.m. So what do you understand from this? Basically, people, we teach your topic three times a day. One in the morning, second time in the evening, third time in the night. Same topic. We do this for sake of revision. I believe in revision, people. Okay. I, normally, you have a question, right? How will I be a good BA? Attend, do revision classes. I insist you to attend all the three batches, people. If not, at least two. I've seen some people. What they do is they come in the morning, they come in the evening. Some people they come in the morning, they come in the night. Some people they come in the evening, they come in the night. Attend more than once. That's good for you. Not only that, people. It also gives you the flexibility of the schedule. That is, one day can come in the morning. Next day can come in the evening. Next day can come in the night. Okay, again, let's say Friday night you have some plans. Okay, fine, come in the morning. You can keep shifting the batches on daily basis, people. It will not make any difference. Okay, fine. Some additional points, people. So, well, the total duration of the course is um, one and a half month. Okay, people, let's say if you have any question, if you want to talk to me, okay, once you register, my phone number will be shared with you. You can call me between 1 to 2 p.m. EST, that is Monday to Friday. Okay, interview preparation will be done after one and a half months of training. Okay. And people, it's a lifetime enrollment. That is, once you uh, register for this course, you can repeat this course as many times you want for next 10 years. Okay, you can repeat this course as many times you want for next 10 years. Okay, so well, people, I'm done talking from my side. Okay, so these are the information what I wanted to share with you. If you want a detailed syllabus, please talk to your training coordinator. You can get a copy of detailed syllabus. Okay, so people, this would be a question and answer session now. Thank you.